Welcome to my second HTML tutorial. Hopefully you've watched my first Learn HTML in 12 minutes. These are the HTML tags that you've learned so far laid out in an order that you might find them on a web page. In this video I want to spend a few minutes making sure you understand what HTML is and how it differs from other languages that you may have heard of and will be learning if you're trying to make a website. HTML is not a programming language, it's a markup language. It defines the structure of a web page. It tells a browser which part of the web page is a heading and which part are hyperlinks, for example. CSS is the language used to add style to a web page. You use CSS to define colors and fonts, etc. HTML and CSS are the only two languages you need to make a simple website. For more advanced projects, uh, JavaScript is a programming language that can be used to add dynamic features to a website. It has nothing to do with Java. Java is not a language you need for a normal website. JavaScript can be used for millions of things, but to give you one example, it can make elements on a web page move around. JavaScript is a client-side language, meaning that it is executed on the user's computer when they load the website. PHP is a popular server-side language, but I recommend you stick to learning HTML before you worry about any of this other stuff. For now, I'm going to stick to using Notepad to create HTML files, but I'll suggest some better text editors in the description. So here is a basic structure of a web page. Let me just get rid of all of that. The next tag to learn is the A tag. This is used to create hyperlinks. So you open the tag, and like the image tag, it needs an attribute. You need the href attribute. So href equals, and then in quotes, the URL which you want the hyperlink to go to. So I'm going to have this send people to google.com. Remember the HTTP bit. Then in between the opening and closing tags is the text that you'll see on the website. So I'm going to type click here. And having a look at this in a browser, it says click here, and it takes us to Google. Next, lists. To create a bullet pointed list in HTML, we use the UL tag. UL stands for unordered list. So we wrap the whole list in UL tags, and then each element is wrapped in an LI tag. So we can very simply add as many as we want, all wrapped in LI tags. I'll just do two, and you'll see we get a nice bullet pointed list. You may be wondering what an ordered list is, if this is an unordered one. If we swap the UL tags for OL tags, you'll see that it swaps the bullet points for numbers. Now I want to return to the image tag from the last video. So here's the web page that we're working on. And next to it here I have a folder called images and inside a photo called piano.jpg. So I'll add this image like we did last time. So relative to this web page, the path of the photo is images slash piano.jpg. If we take a look at this in the browser, we'll see, whoa, this is far too big. So we need to set the size of the image. This is done with another attribute called width, nice and simple, width equals, and then in quotes, a number which is interpreted as the number of pixels. So I'm going to say I want this image 200 pixels wide. You'll eventually get the hang of roughly how big things are in pixels. For now, just guess and use trial and error. So you see we now have a small image, uh, the height has been adjusted appropriately. We could of course set the height ourselves, height equals and then in quotes, let's say 500 and stretch the image however we want. A final attribute for the image tag is the alt tag. This is actually a required attribute and specifies the alternate text for the image. So let me just give myself some more space at the end. So we write alt and then equals and in quotes a short description of the photo. Now you won't see this on the web page. This is what people with text only browsers or screen readers would see instead of the image. So the alt attribute for images is a required attribute. That means that if you don't include it, you, you technically have invalid HTML. Although it will look just fine in a web browser, you wouldn't be following standards. I'm afraid there's one more thing that is required that I haven't told you yet, and that's the doc type. There are many versions of HTML, the latest being HTML5. 
They all have subtle differences. Usually a new version of HTML comes with a bunch of new tags and a bunch of old tags removed from the specification. The doc type tells the browser which version of HTML to expect. The doc type must be the very first thing on any web page. Luckily, the doc type for HTML5 is very simple. We started like any other tag, but then we had an exclamation mark to tell the browser that this is not actually an HTML tag. Then we write the word doc type, D O C T Y P E, in capital letters, followed by a space, and then in lowercase letters, HTML. Then the closing tag symbol. This must be the first thing on every web page. Next, div tags, D I V. These are used to group elements on a page into sections. Think of them as invisible boxes that other things can go inside. By default, you'll not see them, but a div tag will always cause a line break before and after itself. So nothing can appear next to a div tag, only above and below. This can be changed using CSS, but we're not at that point yet. We can use a div tag to define the header section of our page, for example. So in our header, we could have uh, the biggest heading, uh, welcome to my website. Close that div tag. Then we can have one for the main content section. Here we can have a smaller heading. And let's also have some text in there, remembering the P tag can be used for paragraphs of text. And finally, for example, we could have a footer section. Obviously, it's up to you which sections you define and how you use div tags. And you can have div tags in div tags. You can nest that as much as you want. But for now, just a really simple structure. Another quick tip, if you want the copyright symbol, type ampersand, word copy, and a semicolon. If you Google HTML entities, you'll find more useful codes like that. Okay, so we have three sections here, and if we take a look at this, you won't see the div tags, like I said, but they're there grouping elements together and defining our sections. If we were going to use CSS to style any of these elements, let's say we wanted the header to have a blue background, we need a way to identify the div tag representing our header. We need to give it a name. This leads us to two attributes that can be added to any HTML tag, including void tags, the, the self-closing ones like image. So firstly, we can give a tag an ID. So we can say ID equals, and then we could call it header. Now an ID must be unique. You can't give two elements on a page the same ID. If you need to target a group of elements, you can give them all the same class. And this is the second attribute that can be used to identify elements. So we can say class equals, and then a quote to the name of a class. Um, hyphen between words is up to you. We can give any element the same class. And we could this one too, or maybe we could call this my other class. We could then, in CSS, add a style for everything with the class my class. One last tag for this video is the span tag. This is similar to the div tag. It's used to create logical groupings on a page, but a span tag won't cause a line break before or after itself like a div tag does. So let's say we had a, a sentence, welcome to my cool website. And we wanted the word cool, let's say, to be, I don't know, red. We could wrap this in a span tag and maybe give it a class red. So again, looking at this in a web browser, you won't see the span tag. Obviously, we have no CSS, so it's not actually read. Um, but it's there to, to allow us to target that word. If we'd used a div tag instead, it would cause line breaks and give us, give us that, which is not what we wanted. So you now know plenty of HTML tags to start creating your website. You've got the h1 to h6 tag for headings, p tag for paragraphs, img tag for images, remembering the src attribute, um, along with width attribute and height attribute, and the alt attribute, which you need as well. It's worth men mentioning that you can put these attributes in any order you want inside of the opening, inside of the image tag. And this applies to attributes of any element. 
be our tag to um, include a line break and go down to the next line. HR tag to separate sections with a horizontal line. UL tag for lists with each element wrapped in an LI tag. And the OL tag for an ordered list with numbers. The div tag for grouping elements into sections with the line breaks and the span tag for doing the same thing without the line breaks. So you can't overlap elements. If I have an opening and closing div tag here, whatever tag I open inside of this div tag, I must also close inside of the div tag. I cannot open a p tag there and then close it here because this means the elements are overlapping you can't do that the p tag must be closed up here of course elements can go inside of other elements like we've been doing with everything so far if I wanted to create a clickable image if I wanted to turn an image into a hyperlink um, I could use the a tag with the href attribute and my URL and then simply inside put an image tag Um, etc and then close the a tag afterwards and obviously I'd need to finish this image tag so have the alt attribute and that is enough but that would create a hyperlink which is an image I think that's enough for this video I hope you've understood everything so far and I hope you have fun experimenting with HTML I think you now know enough HTML to build a decent website what you're missing is CSS, so you're free to learn some CSS before continuing with HTML tutorials. Obviously there's a lot more to learn, but practice with what you've got so far and have fun. Thanks for watching.